Before we install TeamCity and use it, we need to understand how TeamCity works. So basically, TeamCity is your build management tool. It doesn't compile the code itself. TeamCity watches your source control system and whenever a change is detected, it triggers a build. But the actual code compilation or build doesn't happen on TeamCity server itself. It happens on separate servers that we call build agent. Technically, you can put a build agent on the same server that hosts TeamCity. However, this is not a good practice because you cannot have more than one build agent per server, per physical server. So you are limiting yourself to one build agent if you do this. Without any licenses, TeamCity supports up to three build agents. So you can have a TeamCity server and three separate servers. Each of those servers will host a build agent. So the actual compilation of the code and running unit tests and everything happens on build agents. If you have one TeamCity with one or more build agents, this is a single instance setup that suits a lot of teams. For bigger teams, however, you might want to have a cluster of TeamCity servers. In that case, you will have multiple servers and each server will have one instance of TeamCity server and you put them behind a load balancer. I assume you know what load balancer is. A load balancer basically provides a single point of access to end users. However, it distributes the traffic to the servers that are behind it. So users will only go to one address, for example, to HTTP build server dot local, but then load balancer sends the traffic to either of those servers that you see in this diagram and servers will have to share the database. So right now we understand that to run TeamCity, we need a database. TeamCity comes with a built-in database that is only good for learning TeamCity. If you want to just install TeamCity and learn it, that's good. Or if you have a home project and you just want to have TeamCity to compile it, that might be good, but it's not good for uh, multiple users using it. For more than one user, you might want to use SQL Server Server if you already have it or MySQL. MySQL is obviously cheaper in terms of licensing. So a lot of uh, companies and teams go with MySQL. So you need a MySQL database, for example, and then you need multiple servers in this setup. And also on Windows, you will need a network drive or a shared folder on the network so that TeamCity can store files and those files will be shared across all your servers. Now in this setup, all those TeamCity servers can share the build agents as well, because as I said, as a good practice, we don't put the build agents on the same TeamCity servers. We put them outside on separate physical servers. So all these TeamCity servers that are in that cluster can share the build agents. Even if for the cost reasons, you just want to have a one TeamCity server for now, it's a good practice to put it behind a load balancer so that in the future, if you want to scale it out, you just add more servers and configure the servers to work with the load balancer. Uh, it's a more flexible and scalable architecture. Okay, so let's go and install MySQL and then install TeamCity.